Okay, um, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is May Kitio. I'm with the training department and I'm really excited to take you guys through the ArcGIS dashboards, which is actually the last uh, webinar under the field operation series. So after that, we'll start another webinar. Um, so as we go on, you'll be engaged on the chat box. So feel comfortable to uh, post all your questions there so we can make it as interactive as possible and move together uh, during this session. So um, for today's session, you're going to talk about the ArcGIS operations dashboard. And we have a couple of objectives for that. So we're going, I'm, taking, I'm going to take you through the introduction. I'm going to understand what operations dashboard is, um, the overview, and then how to access the dashboard and how to transform dashboard uh, data using the dashboard and then finally sharing that data. So I'll be able to paste the link uh, for what we'll, we'll have created on the chat box so we can all uh, have a feel of the interface. Thank you. So for a start, another field series, uh, webinar series that we've been having for the past one month, uh, this snapshot basically captures all the applications that we have under the field operations. And the main aim is to bring about efficiencies within your organization. And we start with the, the first bit is generating. And for the generating, basically each, each of these steps or each of these um, uh, steps in your field operations has an application that has been customed to fit that particular theme. So for generating, we have web, web applications for that. And basically what we are looking at is uh, a typical ideal workflow for field operations. So normally before you send people to the field, there's a whole series of steps that come into play. And the first bit is generating. Generating, when you talk about generating, is where you're capturing the needs of your users and understanding or as an organization, what are the gaps um, you have internally that you need to address or send people to the field to be able to understand that gap. So a good example is, for example, the, 20, the 2019 census, that's generating. We normally have census every five years. So that's been input already within the within the within government. And we know as citizens that census happens after every five months after every five years. So that's generating. And that and the idea behind that is we need to understand um socioeconomic dynamics across the country after every five years. So to, to influence policy, understand budgeting across government government and ministries. So that's an example of generating that need. And then after that now is when the field operations come in. So that means you're deciding the team that's doing it, the department that's doing it or the ministry that's doing it, and then coming up with a team for that and then navigating. So navigating is after you've done all that, you've assigned you've assigned a team to do that work. You've already outlined the tasks they need to do. Then the next thing is obviously navigating to the field. And that's where Navigator comes in. It's a routing platform that allows you to um, to, to actually get directions to where the field field uh, the field work is taking place, and that's for Navigator. And then the, after that is now after you've gotten to the spot to the project location, then it's definitely capturing data. So for capturing data, we have Survey One Two Three and Collector for ArcGIS. So for those who missed previous demos within the field series, so we actually have demos for the for these applications for Survey One Two Three and Collector to just shows to show you how we to how they both work. And then after that now is monitoring, and this is the last bit of the field operations overview. Uh, so for today, we are going to focus on operations dashboard and how it's a go-to platform for monitoring and having real-time updates uh, from the office. So that means you actually get to know to have a 360 um, view of what's happening in the field and understanding the KPIs that you need to monitor from your office. So it's normally it's a very good tool for executive access and for any project managers. Um, so uh, for a start, uh, what you're looking at is a screenshot of a dashboard and what a dashboard is made up of is it's made up of maps, data sources and widgets. So those are the three main components of the dashboard. You notice that on, on the screen, you actually have a bit of a map and then you have one side shows the summaries on that map. So you have 37 customers, you have power outages in terms of uh, the current active outages and then you have uh, a list. So that's what mainly makes up the dashboard. Um, and so we're going to explore what the widgets are for and what we mean when what what we mean by widgets. So for the for, for the for the first thing we look when you're talking about a dashboard, it's basically uh, a comprehensive um, go to place that you get information or you get all this information about a certain theme. And that's why you're calling it a dashboard because it's made up of a couple of um, infographics that are really comprehensive to help you understand your data even more. So for our dashboards, uh, what, what powers them up is what we call widgets. And widgets are purely the information displays that power up 
uh, the data visualization process. So typically, when you have a map, you have points on a map, like what you're seeing on the on the on the on the slide. You basically have a map with red points on it. But what happens when you want to understand what are, what is happening within these red points? What are the total numbers? Uh, what is the time duration for this? For this data set, then that's what widgets are for. So they allow you to incorporate infographics within your maps. So a good example of infographics is what you're seeing, the bar chart, uh, a line chart, a pie chart, a gauge. So that's what we call widgets. And the dashboard actually works with widgets to enable you to transform your data from a standard map to a really powerful visualization that enables you to understand statistics within your, within your dashboard. So what you're looking at, the arrows basically point to where the widgets can be placed. You basically have an operation view, and then you're allowed to place the widgets however you want them. It's very dynamic. You can drag and drop and put them on one side or on either, on, on whichever side you'd want to put them. So it's basically based on user preference and how you prefer to organize your dashboard. So all these widgets are actually movable. You can place them however way you want them to be. And then the other bit, apart from what makes up the dashboard, apart from the maps and the widgets, is definitely the data sources. So data sources is what, uh, where is the data coming from? Uh, so it, has, it supports external data sources as well as traditional GIS data formats. Uh, so that means your data, for example, what, what feeds into the dashboard is a web map, but sometimes the data would actually be coming from uh, a geo event server. So it actually also supports that. Sometimes it also supports um, data from, um, from enterprise databases. For example, if you're running on Oracle or SQL Server or MySQL or Postgres, then that also is supported within the dashboard. Uh, and then the other really important bit is what uh, the, emergent, the emergent technology, and this is big data and real-time data. So that means, for example, for those of you who are in, um, in the utilities industry, for example, if you're in the water industry, then you actually have, we actually have some counties that have actually transformed to using smart, meter, smart meters. So that means the uh, data is actually real time. So that can also be fed into the dashboard. And that's what we call data that's coming from a geo event server or a real time server. So um, the other very important bit is interactivity. So the, the main one of the main advantages of a dashboard of the Esri ArcGIS dashboard is the fact that in addition to all the widgets it's supporting and the data sources, it brings about an element of interactivity. And that's what the filters are for. So interactivity means that if, for example, you have um, census data or a beneficiary program for NGOs and you want to understand uh, maybe, for example, you want to narrow down to one county, maybe Nairobi. So filtering enables you to narrow down to your area of interest, as opposed to being, if you have a holistic dashboard that shows all the 47 counties and you're only interested in two counties or five counties, you can actually narrow down uh, your search interest to that particular to that particular search area, and that's what the filters are for. So this is the, these are the steps for for creating an operations dashboard, and this is actually what we will follow. Uh, as we as we do the demo to just understand how to create a dashboard so the very bit is the the very first bit is selecting the type of display you'd want to use um, and then the choosing a web map adding external data sources choosing your widgets configuring your widgets and saving the view so at the end of the of the uh, of of before you even start creating the dashboard what's really important is the fact that you have to have a web map simply because the dashboard feeds on data that comes from a, from a web map. So when you talk about a web map, it's data that it's a map that has been created on the web. And for the web platform, you're talking about ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS. So those are the two uh, portals that we run, and that's where the web map ideally is hosted. And then it also supports external data sources. So that means, for example, you've done, you've You've, add, you've added your, your web map and you feel like you have another data source that you need to add to it. A good example is, for example, it supports joins and relates within that file. So that means you can actually add a CSV table and then do a join so that to enrich your data set. And then after that, now it's choosing the widgets. So the widgets come in in form of do you want to show totals? Do you want to show, to show bar charts? Do you want to show a line series? Do you want to show uh, pie chart. So that's what we're talking about when talking about widgets. And then finally, conf finally configuration and then saving your dashboard and sharing it. So we'll follow these uh, steps. Um, and as we go on, I'll try and uh, reference this to just ensure that we actually are on the same page. So we'll do, uh, I'll do a demo on configuration. Then I'll also do one last one on how to share the dashboard. Uh, for Before we do that, I uh, want us to look at one pre-existing dashboard to just uh, for those who are new to that to the operations dashboard to understand what we mean by a dashboard so this is a simple 
uh, operations dashboard that is used by an NGO to understand uh, the beneficiaries of their program. So you notice on one bit you have a uh, number of female participants, number of males, and then there's a pie chart, and then category of people, and then a list. So when you look at this, you have like five widgets. The 21, that's one widget that's giving you a summary of female participants. The 20 is also a widget. The pie chart is a widget on its own. The bar chart is a widget. So when you talk about widget, it's basically the key information displays that you're picking as the person who's configuring it. That's what we mean when you talk about widget. So it can be any form of chat. And then you notice there's also a line chat is also powered up within that same platform. And then you also have a list on, on, the, on, on one side of the screen. So these are what we call widgets. Um, another very common dashboard that I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you have come across is the COVID-19 dashboard that was created by John Hopkins University. So this is also powered by the SVAC JS dashboards. And what's pretty interesting is the fact that, remember I mentioned that the dashboard actually supports um, different data sources. And you notice in the instance of COVID, um, the data basically is, is, it needs to be linked to a live server. So the power of this is the fact that it's actually linked directly to, to a to to a live database such that if there are new cases that WHO is updating or CDC, it automatically comes here, which makes it really a good, really a very good platform for real time updates. So this is also another example of, of the dashboard, which is within the geo portal. So we'll see how to create such uh, as we go on. So for a start, uh, I want us to go to the to the ActJS online account. So this is what the online account looks like. I'd already signed in and this is my web map. So I'll go one step back for those who are new to the ArcGIS platform and the, on the online portal. So what happens is the portal has all these tabs that you're seeing. You have the drop down here that shows the home, gallery, scene, notebook, groups, content and organization. So any portal you're using, whether you're running on ArcGIS Enterprise or you're, or you're running on ArcGIS Online, all these tabs are standard, they cut across the board. Uh, so for a start, um, I'll go to just show you how I got here. I'll go to the content pen. So I'd already pre-opened that. So this is the content page. So for anyone who's new to the platform, the content page is what hosts your private files. So it's basically your central repository as a user within the platform. And, and since I want to create a dashboard, I've first come to my content to pick a map that I want to use to create the dashboard. So for now, I want us to focus on a beneficiary program. So I'll take us through that scenario for us to understand before we create the dashboard. So for a start, I'll open this map. So you notice here I have a beneficiary program and here it's written it's a web map. So any any central, anytime you're creating the dashboard, remember that the first step was you have to have a web map. That was the, the first step, creating a web map and then now putting in the widgets. So we already have a web map, which I have opened on this end. So when you're looking at the web map, you have a couple of points uh, here which is within Nairobi, actually others are outside this re room. And then uh, you have up here the save button, you have base maps. So for base maps, uh, base maps are basically um, layers that allow give you like a background perspective of where you are. Uh, so for that, you can actually switch to any, but I prefer the dark theme for now. And then when you look at this data, so this is data on, on a couple of beneficiaries for an NGO. And you notice when you open it, uh, you have where the person is located. This is Nairobi, Roisamu constituencies, Kahawa West, and then the name of the distribution center. So these are beneficiaries of, a, of an ongoing NGO program. So you notice when you come here and say show related records, you notice that we've actually linked it to an external data source. So this is another, this is what we mean when you say it actually supports um, other forms of data through joins and relates. So this is the data we want to use. You notice you have the beneficiaries, you have category. These are the elderly, the widows, orphans, then the type of assistance they got. So these food subsidies, these waivers, these school-based uh, food programs. Then uh, and those who received cash, we actually have the amount of cash they were given, the names of the beneficiaries, the gender, the age, the ID number, all this, the county they come from, all this. So uh, we want to create a dashboard that enables this NGO uh, to effectively manage and monitor uh, their beneficiary program with the data that they have. So currently what we are looking at is this is what the data looks like. Uh, so how do we empower them to be able to have a really interactive dashboard that can enable them to make decisions just at first glance? Uh, so we'll start with that. So for a start, we'll come here to the share button. Uh, and then down here, we'll say you want to create a web application. So I'll click on create a web app. And then when I go up, I'll say I want to use ArcGIS dashboards. So it's right here. 
So I'll pick my name. Uh, so I'll pick uh, beneficiary uh, beneficiary program. I'll just call it that. Uh, summary, uh, the dashboard is for managing the ongoing beneficiary program. I'll keep it in my own folder. that uh, for a start this is I'll just put tags so the importance of adding all this we call this metadata and the importance of this is uh, for documenting your data such that if 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 someone searches for this data within your organization based on key terms or key or key keywords they can actually come they can actually be able to access the files much faster so it's a very good it's very good practice uh, I'll add that as well. It's a survey since we, it actually was a survey one to three form of the data came from survey one to three. Then now we'll create the dashboard. So as soon as you click on create, it launches the ActJS dashboard uh, interface. So this is what it looks like. You notice we've maintained the title beneficiary program dashboard. Um, since we created, we already have our map. So this is our map. And then, so that's it. So now how do we bring in widgets? So when you're talking about widgets, so widgets are the information displays you want to use. So when you come to this drop down here, you have, these are all the widgets that the dashboard supports. So you have a header, map, map legend, charts, pie charts, all these. So we're going to explore as many as we can through this session. So for a start, um, maybe just to, to point of something that you can actually add another map if you you feel like that's not enough. If I come here and add, let me just add that to show you what I mean by adding two maps. You notice you now have two maps. You can actually have this map and this map. So you're not limited as to how many widgets you can add to your dashboard. So we'll maintain this for now. Then I want us now to do a couple of uh, widgets. So normally I like putting my map and my dashboard side by side so that I can understand the data as I'm creating the dashboard. Um, Okay, so for a start, this is what my data looks like. So I've gone back to the map uh, so that I can understand the table further. So we have the category of the beneficiary, we have the elderly, widows, so that can be the first summary you want to understand. Um, as, let me just pin this here. Yeah, so for a start, I want to understand that. So we'll come here, when we click here, we'll start with a chart. Um, so I'll select the serial chart for now. Then this is our data set. Now this is what the the widget looks like. So do you remember we said that when you pick a widget, you have to configure. That was the other step. So configuring means uh, selecting which column you want to display. So you notice when you come here, you notice there's actually all these columns. So if I want category of beneficiary, if I click on it, the dashboard is smart enough to break it down for me. So showing me you have 17 widows, 15 orphans, and 19 elderly. So that's one form of uh, configuration. So I've selected that as the category field. Then you notice down here it's counting them. I don't want, it, I don't want any summations. I just want the count of each individual. So it breaks it down for me. So that's on the data bit. Then when you go on the, so you notice on this side, you have a couple of options. You have data, then you have chat. So we'll try and go step by step. So for the chat bit is text color, which, which text color do you prefer, the font size and the orientation. Do I want horizontal bars or do I want vertical bars? I think I prefer the vertical. Then on the category axis, when you're talking about the category axis, this is the category axis, the X axis where you have the categories, the elderly, the orphans and the widows. So you notice up here, um, I'll, I'll, I'll call this um, category. You notice it actually types it. As I type on the title, it actually shows it on the preview here. Uh, then I'll scroll down a bit. Uh, placement of these labels. If I say staggered, you notice these labels, the widows often, the, the names actually change if you're observant enough to see that. If I say rotated, you notice the names shift. So I think I'll use can use the default for, or can actually use the staggered. Um, then also so important, let's go to the value axis. So the value axis is actually the Y axis. So if you actually want, you can put count. Notice it actually types that here, count. So it's quite, it's a very, it's, it's like a wizard that, that has a next step-by-step uh, -step process. What you just need to do, the trick is going bit by bit. We started with data, then we went to chat, then we went to category. Now we're on the value axis. Orientation, what do you prefer? I think I'll prefer the up. 
uh, then the next, um, I think I'll leave this as default, the color of the axis, the opacity, the thickness, and then the guides, I'll also not add any guides. Then for the series, there are different types of charts when you talk about serial charts. It can be a line chart, uh, which will shift that to a line. It can be a smooth line. So as as maybe maybe just to give you a, a little bit of uh, uh, some data visualization techniques. Normally, it's recommended that you use for line charts. We normally use line series when we're talking about date and time information. If you want to see how data has changed over time, you can use a line chart. So that's why this would not be the preferred data visualization technique for a category field like category of uh, like elderly orphans and widows. So for now, we'll use a bar chart um, and then everything else you can keep as default. Then we can change the colors. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I'll just pick a random chart. OK, don't like that one. OK, I can just use that for now. Then we can give it a title. So this is a category. Then you can also give the title up here. So these are the category of beneficiaries. So we'll just maintain. I want you to see what happens when I type here. Category notice on the preview. It's actually changing. It's actually showing you as I type category of beneficiaries then done so that's the first widget so so now our our chat our um, our dashboard has this widget so let's add something else uh so within the map the other thing we also uh, we also had was um the type of assistance they were given and the gender so on the dashboard let's try and capture that as well so i'll come here uh for gender i want to use uh, a different form so i'll use indicator i want to i want to show you what an indicator does uh, so I'll come here, I'll pick the indicator. So indicator is basically summaries. It actually adds everything on your map. So for now, I want us to have an indicator for total number of male and female beneficiaries so that we can understand how is the gender balance coming out in terms of the beneficiary we are giving to this community. Um, so we'll just start with the females first. So I'll filter that out. So the first gender we want to look at is equal to male. Let's see how many they are. So there are 20 males. Um, I'll give it a description here. And then I'll say, I'll just call it number of male beneficiaries. This one here I'll call males, uh, male total. So this is what the indicator does. So the indicator basically, it's like does a total for a certain column you're interested in. Remember that the total was around 51. Or 41 but then since i've filtered and, the, and on the filter you've noticed i've written i only want gender equal male so it summed it summed up for me the number of male beneficiaries so i'll click on done that's the first this is the second widget now remember that we said it's a it's a it's a very interactive platform so that means i actually decide how i want to place the widgets so i'll organize them as soon as i'm done maybe before i go on uh one more thing that i like is the dark theme so i'll shift to the dark theme as sorry as we are going on so that i can just ensure everything uh is visible enough so i'll change all these to brighter colors so i can come here i'll just use this i'll change all these to now white even the text field i'll change that to white so those are the number of male beneficiaries i'll add the female beneficiaries remember we came here we said indicator uh this is our data source uh we'll filter now to female so gender is equal to female let's see how many they are so it's 21 uh then for my indicator so we're now on the indicator so it shows you here value bottom text is when you want to add something at the bottom so let's say female and maybe at the top you want to add something like that which that's not what I'm, I would want for mine. So I'll keep this as blank and just change the totals to a white num field. And then on the general, I'll add a title. So this is female sum. And then for the title of my widget, I want it to be. Sorry, I want it at the bottom, which is the description. I want it to be female beneficiaries. Then I'll change this to white. There you have it. So that's 20 and 21. Um, so for placement of the labels, I'll want to place this next to each other. Uh, sorry. Let me drag this at the bottom and have this other summation here. And then let's bring our map. 
good. Um, and then the other thing we also want to bring in was, um, let's see the data one more time. So we have the gender, yes, the gender. So when you're talking about gender, there's different ways you can view it. I want, us to, intro I want to introduce you to now a pie chart. So we'll select pie chart. This time, uh, the field we are interested in is gender. And then you notice as soon as you do that, it breaks it down. You have 41% uh, female, 39% male, and then there's a null count. So I want us to hide, the, to hide the null so that as we go on, all we are dealing with are the, are the values that actually are populated. So we can hide the null field for now until we populate that as an organization. Um, so I'll come here on filter and then I'll say gender is not null so that we get rid of all the nulls. Is not null. So let's see what happens. Good, so you have male and female, so we've hidden the null. So you have 20 and 21. So the next thing is, uh, we have that ready. So the next thing is going to the next tab, we are on data, so we'll go to chat. So what do you want to change on chat? The first thing is the text color. Since you're using a dark theme, then it will be good to use white color so that it pops out. So you notice it's more clearer. The font size is okay, even that. Then there are those people who, are, who, would, who prefer donut charts. So donut chart is basically something like this. So if you prefer that, it's actually available for those who prefer that. But for me, I actually prefer that. Um, and then the other thing is label placement. So now it's showing percentages, notice you have 48% and 51%. But if you want values, it can actually show you 20 and 21. And if I want to hide that, I can also hide them and have like a legend for that. But for now, I won't have a legend. Let me just use percentage. And then on the slices, I want to change the colors. So that's what the slices is for. So for female, we'll use the standard colors. Normally female is like a shade of pink and male is a shade of blue. So we'll use standard visualization practices for that. Um, then the general, we can call this, this is gender. Again, I'll give it a title, gender of beneficiaries. Okay, since for standardization, you notice all my titles actually at the bottom, which is the description. So I'll just call this gender of beneficiaries. Again, since it's a black theme, the text color will be completely white. That's what I prefer. Then I'll say done. So we have that. So it's slowly coming yeah. together. Uh, I'll place this here. We have that. And then uh, as we go on, okay, so I'll just save this before we continue. So you notice that the dashboard, uh, when you're configuring it, so now we have like four widgets. We have two summaries, the 20 and 21. We have the, the pie chart widget and the and the bar chart widget, I hope, and the bar chart widget. I hope it's now clear what you mean by widgets. Widget is basically what allows you to display all these information items. And then, so after that, we'll do one more. Uh, maybe we can try to bring fast interactivity before we, okay, maybe I can move this to another section. You can actually do this. You can actually have them on top of each other. And then here, I can actually call this gender. So that when someone comes to the dashboard, they have a chart that shows uh, a category of beneficiaries. Fisheries. Category, there you have it. So you have beneficiaries category, and then when I click here, I have the gender. So sometimes you can also do that if you have a lot of items uh, on your chart and you'd want all of them to appear. And then the other thing that we also want to do is, uh, I think this, okay, so we have in a map occupying a bigger space. So the other thing we want to do before we add more widgets, how do we bring in interactivity? So you notice that I have all this, I have a point here, I have another point on this other side. So what if I just want to see beneficiaries in Nairobi uh, or beneficiaries in Kawasukari or the ones in Roisambu, how do I split that up? So for interactivity, the first thing you need to do when you are, when you're talking about interactivity is adding a header. So I'll come here on the widget and add a header. Uh, actually, you don't need, you, for the header, this is where you can even add like your branding guidelines. So it actually supports that. You notice you have a logo. If you have an icon, you can you can pick an icon there. Or if you have a, sorry, if you have a header, if you have a URL, you can actually paste your, the link to your logo here. If you want, um, what else, a background color, you can put in your, your organization's colors. Then, so I've not put anything for now. So now when you put a header, 
the main reason why you want to put a header is because filters are hosted within the header panel. So that's why you first have to put a header for you to activate filters. And for filters, we call them the category selectors. So when you come here, there's actually a button written add category selector. So if I click on add category selector, now this is what allows me to filter my data. So for a start, uh, I'll pick my data first. So for now, I'll use this. Uh, so that's the data we are using. So the first filter I want us to have is constituency. So let's see how we add that. We actually come to the field we want to add. Let's say we want to filter constituency. Notice there's already a drop down. This Kajadio North, Langata, Juja, Westlands, all these. So this is what I want to use as my filter. Hello. So that if I filter Kajiado, I'll be able to see the number of beneficiaries, the gender disaggregation, and uh, what else did I add? The, the beneficiary program they actually benefited from. Uh, so after that, I'll come here and change this to benefit uh, to constituency. That's the name of my filter. And then I'll change the text color. Or I can maintain that. I'll actually change it from the header. So I'll say done. So as soon as you add that, I want you to notice that up here, it brings that drop down with, with all the lists. Now let's see if it's working. So we've not yet finished configuring. So the next thing we want to do is you want to be able to, if I select Westlands, I want to be able to see the female respond, the male respond, and also the category of, of beneficiaries respond. So that's what we mean by interactivity. So currently it's not doing that. So I want to, to show us how to do that. So we'll come back here and click on configure. This time, you go to the actions. So any filters or any interactivity on the dashboard are, is actually brought in from the actions panel. So I'll come here on action and then I'll say add action. And then you should ask you, do you want to add a filter, a flash? So we'll explore all this so that you can actually get the difference. For a start, I'll start with the filter. So I want to be able to filter the mail total. Notice it's listing all our widgets. We'll start with mail total. And since it's a join, we are using constituency because that's the common field in both. So normally when you're talking about uh, tables, it's normally guided. But if you're in an instance where you want to bring two tables together, we have what you call a primary field and a secondary field. And for this scenario, uh, these two fields is what's common uh, in our data set. So we want to filter that. Then we can also filter the female. And it's the same thing, constituency and constituency name. Then we can also filter the gender to see what the disaggregation is. Everything else remains. It's still the common field that's allowing us to do the filters. Then I'll say done. So let's see how the dashboard responds now. So notice by default, since it's kind of Jadio not that has been selected, you notice that it's showing you that you have one male beneficiary and one female beneficiary. Let's look at the gender. So you have 50-50 share since it's 1-1. One, one. So the next thing you want to do is what happens when uh, I don't want to choose any of this. I want to look at all because you notice now we don't have an option for viewing all the counties, all the constituencies here. We can only choose whether we want to see Kajiado, Langata, all that. So we want also to be able to see all the records that we had initially, which were like 41. So you'll go back to configure and when you're doing the filters, there's a none option here. So this none option means that you want to be able to view all. So I'll call this view all. I've activated none, which means that you don't you want to see everything. You're not filtering any. So now you notice when you come here, you can view all or you can just view, let's say, Westlands. So it's able to filter that out. So those are the beneficiaries in Westlands. Majority of them are 66 a male who are 66%. The other beneficiaries are female. Let's look at their beneficiary category. I think we've not yet filtered this. Let's add that filter as well for the benefits that the people in Westlands got. So add action, uh, let's add a filter for category. Yeah, the category of beneficiaries. So we have uh, constituency again, and constituency as the, as the key fields that are linking the map and the data. So now let's look if it actually responds. So if we pick Westlands as a test, so these are the categories, right? You have, um, is it responding? Uh, Langata, let's see. So four, four, three, one. Okay. So let's go back now to Westland. I don't know why it had not picked it. 
uh, good. Yes, yeah, so those are the beneficiaries in Westlands. So you have uh, two widows and an elderly, and, and, and these are uh, two males and one beneficiary who's a female. So again, the male beneficiary. So it's, it's now a very interactive dashboard. Now, the next thing would probably be maybe you're interested in their details. Uh, so I'll just add that as well to show you another type of widget, which is called uh, list. We'll use the same file. So list basically what details, what, what else do you want to list from this data? So for now, I just want us to list, uh, let's say the name. So let's understand who these beneficiaries are. Since it's an internal dashboard for an NGO, they'd probably be interested in getting the all those details. So we can add the name of the beneficiary, sorry. The name of this person who benefited. Then what else? Maybe we can add the ID number. Good. Can We can add that for now. Let's have it as white so you can all see. Um, we can add a space there. And then we can also add here the name. This is name. And then this is ID number of each of the beneficiaries. Uh, then done. So you have a list here. So for the list, you notice it's placed it on this other side. So we can arrange this dashboard and have the list on one side, on the other side of the map. So we can actually have the map in between. We can reduce this. So it's, since it's just a list, we can do that. And then we can save it. And then one more thing, you notice that we've just added a list. So what if you want to see beneficiaries in Kajiado? You notice the list is not responsive. Everything else is responsive. You have two beneficiaries. So let's link again the, the interactivity to the list. So let's go to actions, uh, add target, add the list. And again, the common field in the data set is constituency and constituency. So let's see if the list actually is able to give us the names of every person if we actually filter. So let's look at beneficiaries in Nairobi. Okay, Gatundo, that's still okay. Oh, so yeah, so you notice we have zero female beneficiaries. It's one male and he's actually called Davis and that's his ID number. Sorry, the data is actually dummy. That's why the ID number looks a bit funny. Uh, and then if I select Juja, the same thing happens. I'm able to see uh, the beneficiaries from Juja. Come, it's not responding. I think it's my network. Uh, so it will actually filter down to show you the beneficiaries in that region. So we'll go back to all. Let's just view all of them again. So there you have your dashboard. Uh, so after you've done this, when you've configured your dashboard, uh, remember that oh, there are people who actually don't like the dark theme. So if you've forgotten how I came to the dark theme, you can actually change your themes from here. You can change it back to light or you can change it back to dark. So it's, it, it actually allows you this, that flexibility. Uh, so after that, the next thing I want to do is uh, I can save this. So we have our dashboard here. And then I'll, I just want to share. I'll paste this link on the, on the chat box. And then since you're all not members of my organization, I'll make it a public dashboard so everyone can actually access it. So I'll come here uh, on this on this button. Sorry, on this button right here, there's a copy button. So this is the link to the to the to the dashboard. So I'll copy it and then I'll paste it on the on the chat box so all of you can actually be able to access the dashboard that we've just created, which I have just pasted on the chat box. And then the other thing I want us to do is now share this dashboard. So you notice that I've, I've, since I've pasted the link, notice that if you actually taste it, it will actually ask you to log in because it's a private dashboard. So to make it public, I'll come to my content, which is again my private uh, folder or my private uh, where all my items are stored privately. And then I'll select, you notice my dashboard is now here, beneficiary program dashboard. So I can select it. And then I can select the map that I used and then I'll come here to share and make it a uh, or oh, it's already public everyone. So if it's owner, it means no one else can see it. If it's organization, only people in Esri can see it because that's my organization. If it's public, then that means anyone, even people outside Esri can access it. So now that you've made the dashboard public, all of you should be able to access it. So if I paste that link on, um, let's try and paste it on incognito to see if it actually launches that dashboard. Uh, for those who've tested, uh, yeah, I think it's actually launching it. 
So that means you can actually access it without having to log in with all those details. If, you, if you're interested in probably looking at any location in Nairobi, then it actually filters it. So this uh, so this enables anyone to, to be able to interact with, with what we've just created. So just a recap of what we've done is we've transformed this data. So this is initially what uh, the data was looking like. We've basically transformed it from this to this. So the data transformation basically means that the dashboard actually gives you insights within a glance. You can actually, by just looking at it, you're able to say you had 41 beneficiaries of which 20 were uh, male, 21 were females. But also if you're interested in, in, so in showing the percentages, that's also possible. <clears throat> I think I should actually add that for those who'd be, I think I'd actually added that here. Yeah, so you can actually see you had 51% of your beneficiaries were, were females and 48% were males, which is a quite good uh, uh, breakdown. Yeah, so so that's it on the on the dashboard. Um, I hope it's been it's been quite useful. And then just to point out that it's also possible for you to link your dashboard to Survey One Two Three. So for those who are who are there in the during the Survey One Two Three session. Then you, know, you notice, you remember that when you create the survey, it actually creates a map for you. And that means that that would be the same map. When you come here and click the map, that would be the same map you're picking for your dashboard. So that's the only difference that comes in for all of you who'd want to link survey one to three and your dashboard so that you have real time updates from the field. Then that's that's basically the trick. You basically, when you're putting the map widget, make sure you put the same map that you created when you're using, when you're, when you're sending people to the field with survey one to three. Yeah, so that's it for um, for today's session. I hope you've been able to access the dashboard. I've pasted this same link that you're seeing on my screen on the chat box. Uh, for those who've been not been, been able to access, uh, yeah, actually, able, everyone has, I think has been able to access. So that's it for today. I'll welcome any questions. Uh, thank you for attending today's webinar.